In our last video, we explored how to use a relative layout in Android Studio to make a complex layout with several widgets. We also nested a flow layout to make two buttons appear close together and consume the entire row in which they live on the screen. Since that video, I have added a, a little bit of padding to the left of these values here so they don't run directly up to uh, the edge of the label. And I've also added a couple of new widgets for location and description. In this video, we're going to explore how to access each of these widgets, or at least some of the widgets, from the activity that's going to be backing this layout. We are going to introduce some dummy data into this guy right here. And then we're going to click a button, and it's not going to do what it says right here, but we are going to show a toast. So we're going to look at pulling widgets into fields on the activity, uh, activating a button click, and also creating a toast. So first of all, if I take a look, this is a layout called Activity GPS a Plant. And I want to invoke it from my main activity, which is the activity called GPS a Plant. That's the first activity that was started here in this application. And if I take a look at the Android manifest, uh, what we're going to see is that this is a special activity uh, because it is the starting activity. So in the Android manifest, you see GPS a plant, and you see that it has an intent filter with main and launcher. And that says, hey, when this application starts up, the activity mapped in the Android manifest with this value, I'm sorry, actually with this intent filter, is going to be the first one to start our application. So anyway, I go back to GPS a plant, and what I need to do is I need to look for the method called onCreate, and I need to invoke a method called setContentView. So I'll start typing, and it doesn't take too long before Android Studio uh, makes a suggestion for me and says, hey, I bet you want to call set content view, which indeed I do. So I go ahead and select that. And now I have to pass in a unique identifier for this layout. And that unique identifier is going to be the letter R, and then ID, lowercase ID, and then, uh, I'm sorry, r.layout. And then, and then it's going to be the name of this layout file minus the XML. So activity GPS a plant. That's the first option that comes up. What I'm doing here is I'm making a marriage between this activity and the layout. I'm saying when, when we start, let's start with this layout. Okay, so that's called set content view. Put a little comment in here. Associate the layout with this activity. Okay, next. Uh, what I'm going to do is I want to get access to a couple of the widgets on that screen. And as I said, it's not going to be totally functional just yet, but we're at least going to get enough where we can make sure that our application works. So I'm going to get access to this uh, autocomplete text here for plant name. If I take a look at properties, which is the pane uh, on the right, I can see this ID, and the ID... We want to make sure we name it something uh, that's going to make sense. So in this case, I've called it ACT plant name. I'm going to remember that. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and copy it. Now I'm going to go back to uh, my GPS of plant, and I'm going to say find view by ID. And sure enough, once again, Android Studio auto completes this for me. It says, hey, I bet you want to call a method called find view by ID. So I type in find view by ID, and just like we did up here, r.layout.activity underscore GPS a plant, uh, I need to give it a unique identifier. And that's going to be r, capital R, dot ID, and then it's going to be the name of that widget on the form. I'll go ahead and paste ACT plant name and terminate with a semicolon. Now, I want to save this so that I can use it later. So I want to save it in a field, or we used to call them attributes or member variables, but that's basically a variable that I can access from multiple methods within my class. So I'm going to click on this method call. That's going to return to me an object that represents that autocomplete text on my user interface. So if I hold Control-Alt and then F, it will extract this to a new field. Now the trick is, uh, let's see, 
the trick is it doesn't know the the find by view by ID doesn't know what it's returning. It could be returning uh, a button, it could be returning a label, it could be returning an autocomplete text. So it just returns the most generic of all, which is view. Uh, I'm going to change this to auto complete text view. Okay, now how did I know that? How did I know it needs to be auto complete text view? Well, let's go back and take a look at our layout again. If we look at the layout, I'm going to, let me move this on screen. Uh, I'm going to remember that this is called ACT plant name. And I mouse over it. Uh, if I go to the right under component tree, you see it says autocomplete text view. So that is the variable type that I need to use when I'm over in this uh, GPS of plant. Okay. Now we've opened up another problem. Because this is an autocomplete text view, that's a more specific type than find view by ID is prepared to return. So in Android Studio, Alt Enter will say, hey, give me an idea. What do you think I should do here? And the proper thing to do is to cast. So uh, when I describe casting, a lot of times people get confused. If we can let Android Studio help us, that's a good idea. Let's do that. Uh, so I'm going to tell Android Studio, go ahead and complete the cast. And now we have it. OK. Now the next issue is view by ID isn't very uh, descriptive. So what I want to do is I want to rename this. So I can go to refactor, rename, or choose shift F6, either way. And I'm going to call this uh, ACT plant name and enter. And you notice that when I do that refactor, it changes it in both places. OK, so that's part number one. Part two, we want to get a button to fire. So I go back to my activity GPS of plant. This is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to select the show save button and the ID is BTN show saved. Now I'm going to go to on click and in on click, I'm going to make a name. Let's say BTN show saved clicked. Uh, let me bring that over so you can see that BTN show save clicked. Hit enter. But what's important is I want to copy this because I need that exact text. And I'm going to go back to GPS of plant. And what I'm going to do now is say public void control V. I'm going to paste that name I just typed, BTN show save clicked, and then view V. Open curly and close curly. And above this, I'm going to say this method will be invoked when a button is clicked and that on that buttons on click method is btn show save clicked okay and that's exactly what that means when we set that on click attribute it says okay when this guy is clicked i'm going to look for a method with this exact signature public void btn show save clicked okay now what i want to do when the button's clicked is i want to get the text out of this plant name and I want to show it in a toast. So I'm going to say, uh, first of all, I need a reference to that plant name, that plant name widget. And the plant name widget, we know, is this attribute or this field that we declared earlier, earlier called ACT plant name. Because that variable is declared outside of a method, that means it has scope inside each of our methods within this class. In other words, any method can access that. So I say ACT plant name, and I'm going to say get text, and I'm going to say to string. Okay. Now, remember that a field or an attribute or a member variable is one of these things here we see colored in purple, which means that any method can access it. Do we want to make all of our variables that accessible? Not really. We don't. We want to give them proper scope. Scope means where can this variable be accessed? And we want to be very careful that we don't give everything big scope. In other words, we don't make everything a field. For one, that's using more memory than we need, but that's not even the most important part. The more important part is documentation. If you're going to use a variable only within one method, then just declare it within that method. Then it's obvious this variable is only used locally within one method. So to do that, 
I'm going to put my cursor on uh, the two string method. This is going to return a string. In Android Studio, Control Alt V will assign that to a new variable, and I'm going to call this variable plant name. You could type that out manually. I prefer shortcuts uh, because they're a lot faster. So I'll say get the name the user entered. Now after this, I'm going to pop up a toast. Now a toast is a minimally invasive way to send a notification to the user. Think about when you're using your phone. A lot of times it's when you shouldn't be using your phone, when you're driving, when you're in a meeting, when you're in class. So we really want to minimize the number of clicks it takes to get something done. So uh, a toast is a notification that will appear and then disappear without any user interaction. So to invoke a toast, I need to, uh, I need to invoke a static method on the class called toast. And that static method is called make text. If you don't know what a static method is, don't worry. Just do what I do here. Toast dot make text. If you do know what a static method is, you'll realize we're not creating an object of class toast first. We're just calling the class directly. Again, if that doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. So I'm going to call toast make text. The first thing it requires is a context. Now what's a context? Context tells us about our application. Where does it live? What's its private directory? What's its name? Things like that. Any activity is a context. We're currently inside an activity. So we have to pass a reference of this activity into this method. There again, if that doesn't make sense, don't worry. Just do what I do here. This is a shortcut for the current object, and that's what I need to pass in as the first parameter. Next, the text I want to show, which is going to be plant name. Finally, how long do I want to show it? I have a couple options out of the box. Uh, I can, there are two static constants, and again, if that static constant, if that doesn't make sense, don't worry. There are two static constants. One is length long, the other is length short. We don't know what this really means. We just know one's going to show it for a short time, the other for a long time. Let me go with length long. And then finally, I have to invoke the method show. After the close parenthesis for make text, I put a period, and then show, and then open and close paren, and then terminate with a semicolon. And I will say show the user the name entered. OK, uh, I'm going to save. And then I'm going to click the little bug up here, and that's going to deploy this on the emulator where we'll test it out. That will take just a few moments, so I'm going to pause the recording and come back when that's ready. And now the emulator is up. In the plant name autocomplete text, I'm going to type I like Fuji apples, which is true. And we know that this isn't what the screen is designed to do, but uh, nonetheless, uh, I'll click Show Saved. And you see a notification comes up, I like Fuji apples, and then goes away. So in this video, we've looked at autocomplete text, we've looked at how to call a button with onclick, and we've take, taken a look at toast. I hope you enjoy. In the next video, we're going to take a quick look at how to debug what we've just created here. Thank you.